Howdy folks, how are we doing? We are here in the SF23 and in a nutshell we are at the track that's known as the SR Killer. It's Red Bull Ring, so let's crack on with it. Right then, fast lap done and dusted. Let me show you the rules. Always have a gander of this because it will tell you where the off tracks are and or slowdowns. So really useful to maximize your track limits and really use every bit of the track that we have paid for. Info tab for you. We are using the identical C Sil Sil Spielberg setup. There is a Spielberg fixed and we did check this. The only difference is the amount of fuel in it. One seven gallons, one 15 gallons. So I've chosen the one with 15 gallons in so I can have a bit of practice and then I'm still about the right fuel level of what you'd be doing in the fixed series anyway. So bear that in mind. Track temper of 86 Fahrenheit. So nice and cool, which is nice. And a moderate usage of 44% is what I always use. Now, the lap I'm actually going to show you. We did a fair few laps. Low teens around here in this thing. My fastest is a 13.1. My optimal is a 13 dead. I didn't nip into the 12s annoyingly, but I think the open setup will be easily in the 12s. I'm brutally honest with you. But the lap I'm going to show you is lap 34, which is a 113.225. So it's down low 13s um, as I'm sort of on the fixed setup fuel. The biggest thing with this is I found that this... It's a weird thing. Actually, Booty found it when we were practicing this. Coming out of turn three, you seem to wheel spin your right rear tyre as you're on power, which is really, really annoying. The only way to get rid of it is lift off, you lose lap time, or keep full throw, and it wheel spins up to about fifth. That one tyre. It's an incredibly stiff sashie, this, and I think once you get it wheel spinning from the, the, the weird apex bump on turn three, you can't get it to stop because obviously there's so much power you want to accelerate. So it's a bit of a weird one, that, and that's what was losing us a chunk of time. This little yellow sausage curve here is, uh, is also a massive swear word because... You can't, you can get on it like I've done here, but it does a weird thing where it seems to pull the car left into the barrier, which is a little bit weird. I'm guessing because it is slightly wheel spinning, because again, the contact patch is going to be thinner than the other side tyre. So I'm guessing it adds a little bit of rotational torque into it. Um, but also, if you do drop off it, you're knackered. You spin, you bottom out, it game over. So to go on it, you need to maximise track limits, but it's too risky, I think, in this car, because you'll just spin out and face and, and elbow the barrier, and it won't be won't be fun in the slightest, to be brutally honest with you. So yeah, this car's all going to be, every car's like it, but this car more so, because it's got so much power and so much acceleration, you really notice when you do get a good exit and a bad exit, particularly on the last corner as well. If you nail that last corner, you gain like three tenths. It's absolutely ridiculous. Same with this one, you're dragging that time all the way up to turn three. So, Practice your exits and take things easy. Make sure you're finishing. And this is all going to kill our SR anyway. The amount of off-tracks we were getting was stupid. How many did I get? I got 44 in an hour session. So, you know, that says it all really, doesn't it? Um, otherwise, link downstairs of my Discord where the OLAP, BLAP, Clarence and Replay file will all be hidden in there for you so you can come along and have a gander. Also, links downstairs for Garage 61, which is an online telemetry tool. Not affiliated with them, just a very, very useful tool if you want to compare my lap time with your lap time, see where you're gaining on me or where, you're, where, where I'm gaining on you, where you can improve. So, yeah, always very useful to have a look at them. Free to use, but, yeah, yeah, there's a team section down in there, so you can join that by all means if you want to. Um, otherwise, I think that's nothing waffling, so let's crack on with the breakdown lap. 
Right then, Red Bull ring and let's crack on. We are blasting up to turn one and this is quite good. We need to break relatively early, I think, for this car. 100 meter board just for it. Nice and easy through here. You can't take too much speed because going wide is terrible. Miss the sausage curb there and do not really touch that sausage curb there. If you get a little bit over it like I do, it can settle your car, but it also can spin it up because you lose traction as well. So be careful about that one. Blasting up to turn three now. Uh, this is going to be carnage through here. So just before the way before the 100 meter board, to be honest. Brake in a nice heavy straight line uphill. Be careful not to lock a tyre. Easy through here. Second gear. Turn in nicely and then be careful. Watch my rear right tyre. It gets off the ground and it wheel spins all the way like up into fourth gear. The camber in that corner is really weird and it pitches the car. And if you get on throttle, you keep spinning one tyre. Very strange. Be careful with it. 100 meter board here again on the left hand side. A little bit closer to it this time. Brake again, nice heavy straight line. Be careful of downhill braking zone. Third, second or third through here, depending on what it is, but it can push you wide. Easy on the throttle. You see, I get a slight snap there. So be careful trying to put the power down and change into third gear. Bring the car over to the right hand side now, and we're taking way before the 50 board at this point, probably about the 80 meter mark. Brake nice and easy. Again, slow it down deceptively. Uh, slow this corner is. Keep it nice and left to that curb there and build in the power. Do not run too far wide. I don't know how this wasn't an off track, but it wasn't an off track, so bear that in mind. As the curb comes to an end, you can get on the other alternative layout. Brake nice and gently through this one. This corner's a bit faster. Be careful with the apex curb. It can push you right on exit but again be careful about running wide and under steering wide i did find that on these two corners it was under steering quite a bit get on power as soon as you can and bring the car let it drift out to the left hand side you're absolute golden these last two corners are brilliant fun but you got to get them right otherwise you get slow down so a little bit before the 50 meter board dab of brakes down a cog give a little cheeky tickle on the curb on the apex and you can run wide here keep on the green and white and you'll be golden as the extra tarmac there on the left hand side ends dab of brakes do not hit that yellow sausage curb it can ruin your front wing and let the car drift a little bit less than the first corner so try and stay on the red and white if you can you can run a little bit further out there but again it's not worth it because you can get a slowdown and that is us done and dusted in a rapid 113 225 and i don't know if that's going to be rapid this week i'm only saying it's rapid because it's just over one minute lap which is nuts uh, I think we're going to have a few of these this week. This no, Sorry, next week, not this week. Next week, this goes at Okiyama. I'm terrified about doing that one. Uh, but anyway, talking about Red Bull Ring now, the, turn three will be carnage. Turn one will be a little bit of carnage as well because you will get people running wide. Going over that curb and will induce spins. And turn three will be carnage because the slipstream up the hill will be very powerful, I suspect. We don't hit VMAX, so I think the slipstream will be a little bit more um, effective than it was at Fuji because obviously we were hitting the top of the rev in sixth at Fuji. So then slipstream is irrelevant. Uh, relevant because we're hitting our maximum speed. Um, but yeah, using the boost round here, it's probably going to be out the last corner, I would have thought, over the start-finish line, then up to turn three. I don't see the point in running it down from turn three into turn four, and then all three of the messes. I think the messes are going to be tricky enough as it is. But again, test that for ultimate lap time, I think out the last corner, and then up to turn three, you'll be absolutely golden. You might even be able to defend the slipstream with the extra power that the boost gives you, which is nice. So yeah, looking forward to this week. As mentioned, there's kind of only one really overtaking place into turn three so watch out for that one that'll be where most crashes are i predict otherwise thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and do that lovely youtube stuff and i'll catch you on the next one